Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective, Mr. Tran, what's going on? Love your shirt, my friend. I appreciate you, man. How you doing? I cannot believe it! <laughs> it is him! <laughs> oh, man, I love that movie, man. I love that movie, so... Well, just a guy I met in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so many memorable quotes from coming to America. So we got the Big 12, all Big 12 lists dropped today. Uh, preseason, offensive, defensive player of the year, newcomer of the year, as well as the all Big 12, official all Big 12 team. So that's what we're going to wrap about here today. And... Um, you know, it was it was cool because we actually have five Longhorns um, mm -hmm. make make this list. Uh, I don't. I, I probably should have looked this up before the video, but y'all can hit me in the comments. The last time we've had this many guys, so um, you know this is promising, and we'll, we're going to go through kind of a little bit of a um, just just breaking down the the Big Twelve team. We did this. We did kind of our predictions before on the live chat. And, and we talked about a lot of stuff. So uh, excited to, to go in and, and dive into this with you, Mr. Tran. Yep. Uh, I Just to answer your question, it's probably 2009. <laughs> Last time we had this many. All right, without even looking, searching things up, it's just like, that's probably the last, last year we had this many. Yeah. It, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm five, five of them, because we're tied, I believe, with Oklahoma – and well, actually, we can count them up. Well, I'm going to go ahead and share here. You can let me know when you see it. I can see it. Cool. So we're tied with OU for five, right? So, so for for our Texas fans, Sam Ellinger was expected, even though he did finish behind uh, mm -hmm. Brock Purdy last Purdy. year. He was expected to be first team all Big 12. He was. So we have Sam. Um, Samuel Cosme was expected. And then we had three guys on defense, two in the defensive backfield. We have Joseph Osai, uh, mm -hmm. which there, we'll get into that in a second. And then Deshaun Jameson and Caden Stearns both make first team in the defensive backfield, which I know gets a lot, already gets a lot of heat from folks because they're like, well, you know, uh, uh, you know, you guys, you guys gave up so many yards and we're getting torched by with Tart Orlando. How are the, all these guys making first team Big Twelve? So, I mean, just off the bat, man, what, what, in your opinion, what stands out to you? I mean, I th honestly think it's a pretty fair list. I mean, the uh, I know beforehand we were talking about the only people that would have question marks are probably the wide receiver position. Uh, but if you think about it, Charleston Rambo came, what would you say, he had 700-plus yards last year? Yeah, he. I think he got up around 700. He had a statistical drop-off at the end of the season the last, like, four games. But, uh, you know, but he still put up 700. He's going to be featured in this offense. He's the yeah. number one now. And we know we know what Lake and Riley could do with wide receivers in, in in their in their system, and he put up numbers with other guys around him. So if he's going to be featured, you know, he, I mean, you can almost if he stays healthy, mark it down as he's a thousand yard receiver. Uh, Andrew Parchment, he I think he's the leading returning receiver, correct? Um, I, in the Big I don't Twelve. Know. Yeah, I think so. Either, either him, I don't remember when Tylen Wallace went down, but out of Tylen Wallace aside, oh yeah, but we knew him. he we knew he was right. He, he right. was stamped in, you know. Yeah, but Parchment had like sixty five catches, I think like eight hundred some odd yards receiving last year, um, and was pretty consistent in Big Twelve play. So, um, from a statistical standpoint, the thing is, there's a lot of I think people are going to argue about the wide receivers because there's a lot of people in the conference mm -hmm. with a lot of upside, right? Or guys that had similar stats, like a Tariq Milton from Iowa State who had pretty much on par with Rambo and Parchment yard touchdown when you're comparing those things. There's yeah. a case that I know we're going to hear from people from Baylor about 
uh, Tyquan Thornton, uh, who you really liked last season when we I were. I did. Um, he didn't have the same same breakaway skills as uh, Denzel Mims, but he was a sure-handed catcher. I remember. Uh, uh, I remember the first game I saw him. I think he had 13 receptions for like 180 yards. And I, I think I texted you. I said, we're going to have a problem with this guy. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I see their argument with that, especially since he's going to be their number one. Right, right. Um, so he's he's going to be featured heavily. Um, you know, you could make our – we talk about Rambo, you can make an argue, argument for Theo Weiss, but we haven't seen enough. Um, and then, you know, even some of our guys like a Brennan Eagles, if Sam's going to be the QB1, He's got to throw to somebody, right? So, Brennan well, Eagles. I'm, I'm not upset with any of our wide receivers not even being considered because, to tell you the truth, I think it's going to be, it's going to be shared around all over the field. I, mean, I agree. I don't think there's going to be one featured wide receiver yet. So, I don't think it'll be distributed the same way. I I agree with you. I think the distribution, it will be. Uh, it, it'll be very different from de- the last couple of years where it was Devin Duvernay, Colin, mm-hmm. and then a big drop off. And last the year before Colin, LJ, LJ big drop yep. off. Right. So I even think with the addition of Mike Yersage and us featuring tight ends and mm-hmm. running backs more, that's going to also take up a lot of targets. We have all these people right now that are currently in position battles. Uh, Joshua Moore, Tariq Black, uh, Marcus Washington, Alvante Woodard, these guys mm-hmm. on the outside, right? And, and then you have returning guys like a Brennan Eagles and Jake Smith who are both had six touchdowns each. We've been hearing nothing but good things about – Whittington. Yeah, Jordan Whittington, Jordan Whittington okay. right? So that's a lot of people we just mentioned right mm-hmm. off break. So – I can understand some of these teams that are going to be a little bit more dependent on one or two people, um, how they got here. So I, 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 I'm with you. I agree on um, a heavy part of this. We're looking really at the offense right now, but before we get there, newcomer of the year, Spencer Rattler. I think that's a no brainer. Yeah. No brainer. Um, I think you were the one who told me that Vegas has him as a, what what what's the odds of him to be a Heisman? I think it was um, he was he had the same odds or even maybe even better odds than Sam Ellinger. Sam, yeah. So that tells you everything you need to know. And I know some of the Texas fans don't want to hear that. And and but you know if you've been paying attention to college football since Lincoln Riley has been at the helm of the Oklahoma Sooners program, I mean it speaks for itself. Once Jalen Hurts was the set, was the Heisman runner-up that told me everything I needed to know, mm-hmm. and he was running only a fraction of their offense because of his limitations throwing the football. So now that they have somebody that's a trigger man that can fully open things up like Kyler mm-hmm. and Baker did, that's the type of player Spencer Rattler is, right? And so, and, and now we're starting to see that in quarterback recruiting for Oklahoma. I know a lot of people do have questions about can Lincoln Riley do it without a transfer? You know, you know, everybody's like, oh, he's only had success with transfer quarterbacks. Well, that's been the scenario <laughs> that they've been placed in, right? So, uh, it will be interesting with Rattler. Well, he's also been there now two years, right? Mm-hmm. So yep. it's not like it's not like he's a true freshman or even a redshirt freshman. So he's, he's had two summer, uh, summer workouts with, uh, with, with his team. So he, he knows the system. I, actually, he will be a redshirt freshman because of the four games. Oh, yeah, that's right. But, I, but he's still been there for, for two, two years. Two years. No, you're correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, defensive player of the year, I, I do not mind Darius Stills at all. I think he's, I think he's a beast. Um, I think that Osai can definitely change some minds in this system if he balls out the way that he did it in Utah. You know, I mean, he's he'll, he'll put a fight up for that. But you know, preseason Darius Stills, uh, I think you and I both were fans of both the Stills brothers. Yes, so no issue there with Stills. If I'm putting money up, I'm still going to put money on Joseph Osai. That's how that's the type of belief I have in him, and and we're gonna get down to breaking down the, the all Big Twelve defenses. No disrespect, because there's to, to any of these guys, because there's several feet, several 
guys on here who are actually returning members from that were named all big 12 in 2019. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about upside. We're talking about the scheme change under Chris Ash and him being more utilized as a primary pass rusher off the edge and getting to play to his natural gifts, not having to, you know, back up this position one week and back up this position another week. Excuse me. I think that that's the leap he, he is capable of making. As good as Darius Stills is and, and probably one of the best, better interior pass rushers in the country. Yeah. But Joseph Osai, I think, is cut from a different cloth. So I, I would put my money on Mr. Osai. Chuba Hubbard's a no-brainer. No. <laughs> best player no. in the Big 12. No argument for me there. No, no. This, I mean, this is it, – it, you know, I, let's let's get to the defense. So, our guys here. We just talked about Joseph Osai. We're gonna do a video later, separate on this guy's talking about Sam Ellinger and national perception. I think it's gonna be some good content and a discussion. Tran and I are gonna have just in terms of the you know all just a whole full blown video, really just focused on Sam Ellinger. So. We're not going to touch on that too much, but going to the defense, Deshaun Jameson has been getting a lot of preseason love, Tran. I would say mm -hmm. every Big 12 t uh, preseason list I've seen for 2020, he's been on there, and he wasn't honorable mention Even last Even mentioned, season. yeah. Yeah, so why, do you, why, why the love for Deshaun Jameson? Uh, personally, I think just the – just what he showed last year, this is after him flipping over from being specifically offense, uh, a slot receiver, mm -hmm. and, a, uh, and a punt returner and kickoff returner. He, he led our team in interceptions, and he, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of little growing pains with him. But, you know, one year of experience at, at big-time level plus an offseason to prepare for this, the kid, the, kid could, the kid could just blow up, and he could be that lockdown, that lockdown uh, corner that we've been looking for. And he plays the ball better than a lot of the wide receivers, as you saw in that uh, wide, uh, the West Virginia interception. You know? Yeah, and, and I think that's the thing. He has the wow factor. Mm -hmm. um, some of you guys reached out to me on Twitter, and I appreciate those. We've been interacting today saying, hey, I feel like Jalen Green is a little bit better at this point, or he's our number one guy. And I, and I hear you, and I think from a technique standpoint and, and some of the things that Jalen Green can provide in the run game, there's an argument to be made there. However, these type of lists, they're looking for splash plays. They're looking for people who are playmakers. And Deshaun Jameson's a playmaker. So I know I might get a lot of crap, especially from your LSU friends. But, you know, you got to think about it this, this way. You know, he could be our honey badger. Who was on the opposite side of the honey badger that year? On the opposite side of, mm -hmm. of was it, Mo was, it wasn't Morris Claiborne. It was. It was, it was Morris. It was Morris, it was Morris, Claiborne. Morris Claiborne. And who won the Thorpe that year? Claiborne. Claiborne. Claiborne won that. What was it? Patterson. No, no, no. Patterson. Or yeah, Patrick Pat, Peterson. Pat, was, yeah, Peterson. Pat, Peterson yeah, was Patrick Peterson later. Was but it, so it was. It was before, Morris Claiborne. That's yeah. the. I to a to a smaller degree, you know, Caden Stearns has that ability to be that electrifying playmaker for us. Even even in the punt return game as well. You mean Deshaun Jameson? Yeah, Deshaun. Deshaun. I'm sorry, Deshaun Jameson. Yes, um, he has that ability, and you know Jalen Green is fantastic, and I do think he's our best. Uh, he, he's he's got the prototypical size for a for an on the ball defender, so he could they could play that you know the the B version of that, and I would be extremely happy with that. So that's high upside, which you yeah, just talked very, about. Very high upside. Very, I, know, like, I know, and I know I'm going to get a lot of crap from it, but you know, it's very high upside. I understand but the analogy I've you're seen making. Some, I've seen a lot of explosive plays from Deshaun Jameson uh, in the kickoff game, and also in uh, in defense as well. I've seen he had he led our team in interceptions last year, and he he's not a natural. He wasn't a natural corner. This was his first time playing the position at a college Agreed. level. I also think he can be a dynamic kick returner still. Mm -hmm. um, and I would still – he would be my number one. Now, I think whether it's Jordan Winnington or even B. John Robinson, I, that, those are some of the type of guys I would look at for kickoff for us. 
Um, and we'll see how Texas decides to handle that. I always like having more of my running back types handling those duties. But when it comes to punt return, I want to see Deshaun Jameson out there. He had four punt returns last year for 102 yards, and we were pretty much negative before we were talking, and Brandon Jones had the big one against Texas mm-hmm. Tech. So I, I need more of him even in that role as well. Um, and, and as you said, they're 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 banking on upside again. Like people, you see all these these numbers next to guys' names. They've had honors before, mm-hmm. and then the two guys here. This is upside because Caden's had honor, honors before. Honors had yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Kay, so. Caden's had yeah. Caden was 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 there fr- his freshman year, but um, even getting to him right. So um, I told you guys on the the live chat. I thought Caden Stearns was fr- going to be first team Big Twelve. And they're they're looking at it kind of the same way that with Jaquan Bailey, where it's like, hey, some of these guys are are going to be back to their 2018 level, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so we have to give them the benefit of the doubt there. So the same benefit of the doubt that Jaquan Bailey gets, uh, Caden Stearns was was levied that as well, and I agree with it. I think he's going to be again with the scheme shift and what he learned last year struggling i think struggling was good for him i think that will be good for him it exposes you to your weakness your technique issues what you got to work on and then having to learn how to play nickel corner having to learn how to play in the box as a safety like you can't just roam all the time like sometimes you're gonna have to step up and do different things i think that's something that's going to benefit brandon jones when he goes to the nfl as well um learning to uh that versatility now, with the scheme change, you know, the DBs are going to be protected more because we're not <laughs> fire blitzing from every angle, every other play, <laughs> and just leaving people on islands, right? So, at least that's what we expect to see from, from Ash and, and what we've seen from him previously at Ohio State and Wisconsin. So, I'm, 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 I feel good about this list overall. Um, is there anybody that you think has an argument or or was snubbed or you think in the conference and then I want to get to Texas guys I mean I think this this list is fair I personally you know I told you this I personally would have rather us have only a couple people on this first team Mm -hmm. just to light the fire (laughs) <laughs> you know, I don't right. want them to because we've had a history of us just looking at ourselves and be like, yeah, we deserve it, you know, type of thing. I want right. I want that earn it and take it from people type of mentality. But, you know, I, I don't mind it. You know, the, the Deshaun Jameson, it, to me, was a little bit of a shock. But, you know, after thinking of how he did play just off of, off, off of one, one season at, at quarter, cornerback and him leading our team in interceptions, uh. Yeah, he got beat on a couple double moves, but you saw him get back. He had that makeup speed, and I think I, I just think with a, cu- a little couple technique tweaks, he's he's going to be a beast. Uh, thing I want to see from him as a punt returner is I want to I want to see him more versatile. I don't want to see him just you know it's constantly go no matter what you know if he if he needs to take the uh, fair catch take it. I, I want just one specific punt returner for everything, you know. Just, uh, uh, yeah, you're saying you don't want a punt return. Yeah, safe I, I don't. Or... I, I I don't need Jake Smith back there to to just catch a fair catch. I mean, I, I Deshaun Jameson is more than capable to do that, but you know, it also it also throws off the 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 return the return not the return team but the uh, the the spe- the their team. special team their punting mm-hmm. team. Yeah, uh, that. Hey, he could take off at any second, or he could just he could just run it down, catch a fair catch, uh, or he could just just pick it up where 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 it's it saves it saves field position. You know, I want him back there doing that, and I w- I want to feel comfortable with a return man that can do that. One specific one. I don't like I don't like the shuffling, especially when punt return safe turned into not so safe last year. <laughs> so. Uh, I think Brock Purdy has a case, and no disrespect to Sam, our guy, and, and whatnot. Well, I said uh, I said that I was like, yeah, he he should have probably been in there over him, but the first video we did. I but I I, I still think with what Sam's done, full, again, full body of work over several over several seasons now, and and being 
really the leading NCAA passer. Uh, mm-hmm. He's earned that right as QB1. And um, I do think he'll have a, a a season worthy of that and could potentially compete for Offensive Player of the Year if we do it right. And and not to, with with your search. And, and honestly, I mean, he's he's the face of the biggest brand in the Big Twelve. And right. Brock Purdy's Brock Purdy's not in the biggest brand, and it's not it's not a knock on Brock at all. It's just that's the well, way it is. Well, and let's also be let's keep it all the way a buck. Brock Brock is higher regarded NFL circles. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Just just yeah. facts. I mean, yeah. you listen to them talk about Sam and you listen to them talk about Brock Purdy, they let they would really, really like Brock Purdy. So mm-hmm. um I think that's more of a market thing. But we'll get to the Sam stuff later video. Mm-hmm. Um Amen uh Ogbang Biamiga, who the linebacker. is the linebacker from yeah. Oklahoma State. Very similar stat line to Joseph Osai, um, where he had around 100 tackles, combined tackles last year, five sacks and an interception. So, um, you know, if, if I, I know we're going to get – we're going to hear some stuff about him because Bernard and Wallow were going to be kind of locks at linebacker, mm-hmm. especially after, you know, going back and watching them a little bit more. I was really up on Bernard. I have, wasn't as high on Wallow, even though he was first team – all Big 12 last season. I just the TCU thing is just crazy to me how they had all those people and and we're five and seven. And mm-hmm. Now they got Marcel Brooks and they got uh, Zach Evans. TCU's trying to make a little noise over there. Um, and I haven't mentioned this yet, but Matthew Baldwin retired, and so um, hmm. you know Max Dugan, the world is yours. But going back to <laughs> the Osai versus I don't know how he ended up going getting all the way over to Max Dugan. But um Osai versus Amen, I just think that and they both have because uh, Amen had a great bowl game against A and M. He had like twelve or thirteen tackles in that game. So I think you I just think the upside for Joseph Osai is is through the roof. I think mm-hmm. at an NFL level, especially when you look at size, um you know, he's a much bigger guy. I think he's a faster player, uh, very, very explosive. So, you know, I, I, I'm cool with, with the list overall. Um, you know, the 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 Stills. I, I may have even had the other Stills brothers Oh, the here. Stills brother, yep. Yeah, over Eli Howard personally, but I get it. Um, you know, Eli Howard, I think, has some of the most starts in all of the Big 12. I, here's a question I have for you. And we can finish the video here. What Texas player that is not on this list you're, that you would put money down that ends up all Big 12 at the end of the season? That I'd put money down? That you would be willing to put money down. Bet money this guy. Yeah, I know he has, wasn't mentioned, but I feel strong enough to say, and it could be somebody who was close. It could be somebody who we haven't seen play. I don't care who it is. Just in terms of what you expect from the Texas Longhorns, uh, two names just pop up in my head. Um, honestly, Dicker could, uh, but you know, Gabe was—you uh, said perfect, right? Yeah, he was perfect. Um, so he'd have to be perfect, and Gabe would have to f- start missing kicks. Yeah, which is yeah, yeah. Uh, but I'm going to go with my boy, uh, Coburn. I just think that he, he's he's a man amongst boys down there. And going to the four-down four lineman, he's not going to eat up as many double teams. And he might get a lot, of pre- lot more pressure on, uh, from the interior position on the quarterback and get more sacks and up his little s- stat line and also his draft position. Keandre Colbert, the man in the middle. Um, and, and I think he's going to get a little bit more love from a standpoint of um, not, you know, in, in the in the defense now, he's still being that nose, but having a little bit more help down there. Um, mm-hmm. I think having a, a beefier Tavondre Sweat to help back up for him, for his backup, and him even getting some pass, more pass rush opportunities. I can foresee for him. Uh, but five is, a, I mean, 
just just getting back to this list, five is a good number mm-hmm. for us um, of, of guys. I mean, you see teams sometimes take it to the next level. I have a wild card for you, um, complete wild card. But as a member of the – and a lot of people think right now I'm going to say Keontae Ingram, but I'm, I just think – I don't know if he'll get the touches needed with – Roshan behind yeah. him and Bijan. And Bijan, yep. Yeah, and because and, he made the he made dope the dope watch list, but um, as much as I love Keontae and and how he looked when he was healthy and he actually got his touches, I'm actually gonna go with Joshua Moore. I think Joshua Moore is <laughs> the things I hear behind the scenes. His name is a constant one that continues to come up. And I know Tariq Black's on this team now. I know Brennan Eagles is on the other side. I know the slot guys, all that. There's just something about Joshua Moore. And we have seen very, very little of him. And this is completely out of left field and com- complete wild card. But I think he's a guy I wouldn't be surprised if he's a special player for us. I hope so, man. You know. He's He's – gone through he's gone some trials and tribulations and i hope something good around the corner absolutely happens but look at the wide receivers we had on our team last year and you had scouts saying who's number 14 is he the best receiver on their team Mm -hmm. when you start hearing stuff like that from behind and and them saying oh we couldn't cover him when he was scout team every week i don't know it's just just a question i have I know some people are going to be like, Joshua Boyd's not even going to play on this team. Steve is going to be Tariq Black. You know? <laughs> That's all I've been hearing, though, is that is that <laughs> uh, Smith, Whittington, and he's showing out for the, for, for the first couple of practices. Now, if we go by old standards, let's say we don't change as much as we think we do, then Jake Smith, because mm-hmm. of the volume. Yep. Assuming that Jake Smith wins his – when I say wins, that he's taking, say, 60 to 70% of the snaps over Jordan Whittington in that slot position, just because he does have a leg up in terms of experience of playing the position last season. Then I would say sheer volume and, and how we utilize that spot, the guy might catch 100 passes, right? So um, all very good questions. I think Chase Allen, if we look at the tight ends, Charlie Kohler's amazing, and Chase Allen from Iowa State as well. Mm-hmm. They probably have the two best tight ends in the conference, in my opinion. Yep. Um, so, you know, that uh, them, Brock Purdy's going to have something to say. Brees Hall, they're going to have something to say. Um, yep. But this list is cool. Um, Texas with five guys, OU with five guys. I think Oklahoma State had four. So pretty spread out. Even got an appearance from Kansas. Was there any team on here that didn't have representation? Uh, representation. No, I think so. I think there's 10 teams. One, two, three, four. Can- Kansas is on there. Yep. There yeah. it's Puka. Kansas had two on offense. Yeah, no. It's everyone on there. So, all right. Well, y'all let us know what you felt about the list. And um, we a uh, couple announcements. We will be back. Like I said, we're going to have a Perception of Sam video with Sam Mellinger. Um, I'll probably come on tomorrow to react to the Brockermeyer's decision. Yeah. Um, we, um, you know, it's, it's we, seeming like it's going to be a sad, sad. Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that'll probably be a short video, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we will not hide. It's like, Hey, it's Steve from fanatic perspective. They went to Alabama. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> 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 Horns always up. <laughs> it's like they went to. Hey guys, Steve here, fanatic perspective. They went to hey, Alabama. Emma. Bye. <laughs> Roll Tide. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll be back with that. Um, and. Uh, the preview, brother. <laughs> yeah, preview, preview. I do want to run something by you and, and the yeah. fans here because i um, been thinking about this. How would you guys feel, and Trent, you'd have to do this with me, 
uh, um, about doing a rewatchable series for some recent Longhorn games. When I say recent, I'm talking about within the last, within the 2000s of, okay. you know, just rewatching a game, maybe streaming it together, doing a live like, chat of. Like what we're doing you know, with the Ohio State one. And just, yeah, and the just Ohio going State back and forth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, because, and the reason why I bring that up is, you know, with the season being in jeopardy and, you know, I, at this point we're all starved just to watch football. Um, and what kind of triggered this for those who haven't, who don't have, LHN, they've been just running old Texas old games, games nonstop. And so they ran the 2016 Notre Dame Texas game. And I was just so engulfed into it, even though, you know, that whole You knew what happened did. afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but the reason, but the, but I love the, it felt like a huge game at the time. Right. Oh, it was. And I want to have videos like that with you guys and y'all y'all take a vote in the chat if y'all are not interested or we don't see the love or we don't see the likes on the video then we won't do it but um i think it'd be something cool we could stream together talk about it because even the excitement when, when shane bouchel ran into the huddle for the first time in that first series and sterling gilbert's there and they're introducing the new offense, and we go and go down the field. And we get the Armani Foreman touchdown that ends up on Sports Center that mm-hmm. very first drive, and and I just remember the hope, right? And so one of the things I like to do is have a rewatchables and provide context. I got the idea from Marcus Mosier, who did this on Twitch, where he was streaming the Cowboys Packers game from 2013, and then I was rewatching. When we were watching that game, it's like, oh damn, that's why the playoff game in 2014 happened the way it did. Mm-hmm. And that's why the 2016 game happened the way it did. And then also like the coaches, cause Mike McCarthy was the coach and now he's the Cowboys he's coach, the Cowboys coach, yeah. right? So just things like that, little tidbits, um, guys that ended up in the league, you know, we can go back and I, I like doing obscure games like that. We all remember the a and the last A&M Texas game, right? Like, those those games where we watch all the time. I want to find something where it's like, hey, this game ended up being a lot more important than we recall. You see what I'm saying? And and, and or or the significance behind some of those things. So, um, like I said, vote for it. Tran, what are your thoughts on on doing something like that? Sounds like I'll, you're in. I'll watch. I'll watch football all day, every day. I don't care. <laughs> uh, I know it's. I know it's depressing that I'll watch older games, but you know, I still do. I don't care if it's on TV. I'll watch it. No, I. You know, you. Can, I, I. I would look forward to doing that with you. So, um, yeah, y'all, let us know how you feel about it. But, guys, this is our all Big Twelve list breakdown. Uh, just more of an extension of what we talked about in the live chat last time. Uh, we will let y'all know when we go live again next and and try to get the word out early so you guys can plan accordingly to join us so tran i appreciate you man always man too easy the (laughs) t-shirt brother appreciate you (laughs) all right man um guys horns always up